while searching for some fresh content ideas, I stumbled across this website that won award site of the day just yesterday. What really caught my eye was its stunning scroll animation. Not only do the images animate beautifully as you scroll, but the height of each item adjusts dynamically too. It was so slick that I just had to recreate it and share it with you all. Today we are going beyond just adding scroll animations. We'll also implement the smooth scrolling effect using Lenis. Let me tell you that a simple scroll trigger isn't going to cut it for what we need. Later in the video, I'll tell you why that is and how we'll also leverage the Intersection Observer API to pull this off. Don't forget to hit the like button if you find this video helpful and consider subscribing if you are new here. Alright, no more delays. Let's get into the code. Let's get started by setting up our HTML structure. First things first, we need a container that will hold everything together. Inside this container, we'll set up three main sections. The hero section, the services section and the footer. These are the building blocks of our page layout. Now diving into the services section, we need a header. To achieve this, we'll create a two column layout. In the second column, I'll place an h1 tag that reads all services. We'll later use Flexbox to position these properly. Next up, let's structure the individual service items. Each service will be split into two key parts, one for the text and one for an image. Within the text part, known as the info container, I will add an h1 for the service title and a paragraph text. Over in the image container, we'll set up a div with the class name image and inside this, we'll place an image element. I'll replicate this entire setup four more times, updating the text and the images for each different service. That's the foundation. Let's jump into the CSS. We'll start by zeroing out the margins and paddings for all elements and setting box sizing to border box. For the typography, we are using new Montreal fonts. This will apply to all text on our page. For the container, we set the width and height to 100% so it fills the entire screen. For our headings, we are going with the white color, a font size of 36 pixels and a medium font weight. Paragraphs also get the white color with a smaller font size and a lighter font weight. The line height is set to 150%. Images are set to cover their containers completely, ensuring they are always shown at the best size without distortion. The hero section spans the full viewport width and height with a background image that fills the area completely, centered perfectly. Our footer matches the hero in size, using a different image but with the same filling and centering properties to maintain consistency. The services section features a dark background with generous padding and a column layout. In the services header, we use flexbox with a gap for clean spacing. The columns within are sized proportionally to balance the text and the space. Each service is displayed in a row layout using Flexbox with a subtle top border. For the text info in each service, it's organized in a column fully utilizing the space to separate the title from the description. And for the images, they are given 100% width and height. Lastly, each image container is styled with the rounded corners and a hidden overflow. 
For now, we are setting a fixed width of 30% to the image containers. Later in the tutorial, we'll expand this to 100% width as we scroll down. Just like the fixed height we set for the service items. As we plan to implement Lennis for smooth scroll effect, I'll paste essential CSS from the Lennis documentation. This will ensure the page has certain properties what Lennis needs. I'm opting for a fixed height for the HTML rather than auto height. This is crucial because the total page height will be updated in real time as we scroll and setting a fixed height helps prevent any conflicts with the Lennis setup. Alright, let's get to the main part now, JavaScript. First up, we need to address a challenge with using scroll trigger directly. Scroll trigger sets its trigger points when the page loads, based on the initial layout. However, since our page's layout will dynamically change as we scroll, particularly we'll be updating the heights of sections in real time, scroll trigger alone won't be able to keep up with these changes. This is why we'll incorporate the intersection observer API to detect when our service items come into the view effectively. We'll begin by setting up our Lannis instance for smooth scrolling when the DOM is fully loaded. We connect Lannis to our scroll trigger to ensure it updates correctly as we scroll. You can grab this entire block from their official GitHub page. We are not customizing anything here. We just need the basic smooth scroll behavior. Next, we set up our service elements for animation using Greensock's utility function to target all elements with the class service. We then define the observer options object, which configures how the intersection observer tracks elements on our web page. This configuration is crucial as it determines when our animations should trigger as the user scrolls through the content. The threshold is set to 0.1 which means the animation will start when the 10% of an item is visible. Now let's define the heart of our interactive animations, the observer callback function. This function is where the magic happens when our page elements come into view. The callback runs for every element we are observing. It checks if the element referred to as entry is intersecting with our viewport. If it is, that means part of it is visible to the user and we can start the animation. For each service section that becomes visible, we first find the image container within it. This is where we'll apply our width and height animations. We set up a scroll trigger for a width of the image container. As the user scrolls, progress measures how far the scrolling has gone and we adjust the width of the image based on the progress. Similarly, we animate the height of the service section. The height increases as the user scrolls further. Once we animate a service section, we stop observing it to optimize performance and prevent re-triggering the animation unnecessarily. This function integrates the power of intersection observer with GSAP scroll trigger, enabling us to create compelling scroll driven animations that respond dynamically as user interacts with the page. Now that we have defined our observer's behavior and configured its options, it's time to put everything into action. First, we create a new instance of the intersection observer. This observer is set up with the observer callback function we defined earlier, which contains all the logic for what happens when a service becomes visible or intersects with the viewport. 
Next, we grab each service element on the page by looping over them with for each function. For each service, we'll call observer on it. This tells our observer to watch these service elements closely. When any part of a service enters the viewport as specified by observer options, the observer callback function kicks in, triggering our animations. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.